with a yo ho ho it's Taylor the Toaster and welcome to the competition routes guide for Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy, Big Bang and Supernova. This will include competition routes that are available during the main story and also in the post game going over all of their definite rewards and some of the most important optional item drops as well to help you recruit all the characters or get anything that you might need for a post game run in this game. We've got a lot to go over, so let's just start with the very first competition route. Steve Grimm is available here at Riverside from Chapter 4 onwards, and this is your easy competition route, the one that's available to you right off the bat. You can go right immediately and do these uh, really, really easy teams at low levels, basically to level up during the main story. It's optional training for you, and you'll always get the team's icon for a win, this initial route is the first one available to you. You beat these three, you get a move manual for Menacing Glare, that's Buddy's Dribble, and then when you beat the specs, you get the Riverside Ticket one, which opens up the next route here. Also, if you're able to S-rank this route, which means that you beat all the matches in a given route with at least five goals and no goals scored against you, then you can have the Fireball Pendant. So that uh, will unlock the left route, where they're still obviously not very threatening. We've got level 12s, level 14s, but the Elemental Masters actually drops the Cayenne Pepper, which is what you use to unlock players from Fire Dragon, the South Korea national team. So that is not a guaranteed drop by any means, but if you at least have the Treasure Pendant icon equipped to somebody in your party, you will increase your odds of getting that and you can get one out of a silver chest in uh, Nyadi. The silver chest will become important as this video goes along, so we will talk about that later. This treasure chest contains a special tactic for tortoise shell pattern, and the only defensive special tactic that you're given by default in this game is box lock, if I'm not mistaken, so you definitely want to get that, that's worth beating some early game matches. You can also occasionally get the Artisanal Snowman from the team the Stratospherics, and that will help you get players from Alpine Junior High. Plenty of these item drops are just going to be uh, boots and other things like that, but if we look at team number 7, Family Flash will randomly drop the Moonlight Lantern, which lets you get players from Luna C, which includes Alessandro Il Grande and Dodge, and the final team, Ryman Reserves, will drop the Riverside Ticket 2 to allow you to do the most difficult route that Steve Grimm will give you access to. Uh, Inline Stampede is a dribbling move from uh, Perfect Cascade. This lower route is the one that requires us to have beaten all the other matches first, but it's still not especially difficult. We've got the same old, which will drop the Ordinary Magic Wand, which allows you to get players from Mirage Academy such as Harold Houdini. In this box we've got the emblem for a team that isn't actually available in any competition route, so they just had to throw in the icon elsewhere to help you get it instead, but there's no other rewards of note until you get to the final match against Smiley Cosmos, which gives you, I would say, the best emblem drop in the game if you want a novelty icon to use this uh, troll face smiling moon is something great, but also they drop the palpitation camel, whatever that means, which is a requirement to unlock Saudi Arabia players from Shamshir. And if you can S rank the route, again that's beating every match with at least five goals, then you can get Jungle Jam, just one of the best defensive shot blocks in the game. It always helps. So that's a nice quaint little route to just get you started. Again, chapter four is before the halfway mark of the game, so always useful for grinding up your players. Just that little bit more, especially because if you do S rank a match, you get double experience points. Oh, and one more thing about Steve's route. This is probably the most important advice I might give in the entire video. If you S rank the left route, Again, Inline Stampede is the reward for just beating it, but if you S rank the route by beating everyone with at least five goals, which is really easy considering the strongest team is only level 25, 
no spirits available or anything like that, you get the treasure pendant. This is one of two treasure pendants available in the, in the game. The other is locked behind a silver chest in Nyadi, which is attainable during the main story. But this one is available even earlier. And if you want to get those random drops in these matches, like the cayenne pepper, you're essentially wasting your time if you're doing it without a treasure pendant equipped. Sure, you might get the item, but you might as well increase your chances tenfold by just putting some time aside beating this competition route early on in the game, get the treasure pendant, and then you will see, you'll start to see so much more in the way of item drops. Just put it on Ari and Sherwin so that you can be sure it's part of your team, whether you're doing a five-a-side or a full match, and when you do get the second treasure pendant, also give that to someone else. So weirdly, Steve Grimm kind of has one of the best rewards in the game, even if it's mainly a reward for getting other items from other competition routes. But also during Chapter 4, if you jump over to the Aqua Mall and head north, we can go to the Ferris Wheel. This is where we had that story interaction with Trina, where she rescued a cat, and pretty much as soon as that interaction is over, Millie Moonlight will spawn in the next time you enter this area. And again, you can get more training during the main story if you want to make it easier. But you can also get plenty of nice rewards out of this one as well. The Tongharnian Boots is one of them. Dave Evans uh, lives in Tongana. But again, just three teams. For beating the third, you get the Odiva Ticket 1 guaranteed to unlock more matches in this route. And for S ranking, you get Holy Roller. Formerly the strongest shot available to Arian Sherwind before he instead got Typhoon Tornado Hurricane in this one. It's still on Desmodus Dracul, but the left route has a lot more. And again, this is uh, balanced for moves that would be useful to you within the main story, like Katana Kick. The Romantic Telescope is a drop from the Artistes. This is for recruiting players from Universal, which is Sol Daystar's team. It's also a requirement for Paolo Bianchi. And this, I think, is the most important treasure chest that we've seen so far. Tactics Offside Trap. It's pretty much, in my opinion, the best special tactics available to you during the main story, or at least most of it, until you can get stuff like March of the Penguins and uh, anything on that level. But Offside Trap, it just stops the field of play in an instant. You get possession and you can put your players wherever you want. So that is a really, really good reward while the uh, heart pendant is a little bit more normal, shall we say. But if we look at the goggle divers, you can get Kirkwood's own pickle from this randomly. That allows you to obviously recruit players from Kirkwood, but it's also a requirement for some of their coaching staff like Aphrodite, so it can be worth. Gigant Wall, really good bit of goalkeeping. Obviously the game prepares you very well with goalkeeping stuff anyway, but always uh, nice to have. The Learning Pendant, I believe, increases your experience points output. And then the Feral Fullbacks not only gives you the ticket to unlock the third route here, but also the Koala Diver Man doll, which is allowing you to recruit players from Big Waves, the team of Australia. And again, when I'm mentioning that you can recruit players from Saudi Arabia and Australia, this is during the middle of the game. You have to at least go into space for the first time, but then pretty much as soon as you can come back, there is a Palpak uh, society in an area that we're going to later in the video, and you can actually use some of those FFI participants before the end of the game, which is helpful and they're not too hard to recruit either. Uh, Rising Dragon Roma's Dribble was our final reward for that. And then on the right route, we've got the Ear Buddies, which gives us the Stirring Hunting Horn. You can use this to recruit not too many characters, but Destra from the Dark Angels is one of them. And then move on a little bit longer. Up here is another special tactic, Absolute Barrier, the defensive tactics from Alpine. So that's useful. I would be using uh, Offside Trap over that, but... The Chroniclers drop the Bouquet of Flowers, which is what you use to recruit players from the Desperados, one of the post-game teams in Chronostones, the LBX movie crossover, so Flora, Asta, or Fran in Japanese. 
It's also a requirement for unlocking Gabby Garcia in the only game where you don't get him by default. And finally, the face painters will drop the beautiful teacup. Sometimes, again, not guaranteed, but you use this to get Mount Olympus players such as Cronus, and again, maybe some of their coaching staff like Axel and Quagmire as well. If you can beat all of those matches with an S rank, you will get the Fireball Bracelet. Entirely possible within Chapter 4, your players are plenty capable of winning all these matches. So next we head to the Tower, and this is available during Chapter 5. New character Judy, the friend of Buddy Fury, is hosting a competition route herself, and this is definitely one that's at work. It's worth at least doing the first three matches. Again, it starts with the lower route, which is only three matches long. But if you can beat it, you get Thunderbolt for special tactics. Now, I already mentioned in the previous slide, essentially, that Offside Trap is one of the best defensive tactics in the whole game. And now, they're also giving you one of the best offensive ones in the game. Thunderbolt is seriously good. It's part of the main story to get that in Go 1, so if you've played that game, you know exactly how good it is. Basically just teleports your strikers right in front of the goal to go and take a shot. So if you've got Offside Trap and Thunderbolt, you're set, basically, until you get March of the Penguins in a later competition route. You'll be just fine with those two. And if you S-rank the route, you get Economy, which is pretty useful for making your players spend less TP on any given move. It's actually part of Keenan's level up move set. Uh, for familiarity. Next we can go along the left route and the first one of importance is the hair clips. They drop the coriander colon. However you say that, it unlocks players from the Moy Tigers, which is Thailand. It's also important for Chuga Liang if you're wanting to get a Mixy Max with Thundertaker involved. This one might be the most uh, of interest yet. Noisy Nose drops the Dog-Eared Football Mag, which is a requirement for getting players from Ryman. And when I say Ryman, I mean the old Ryman, like Steve, Max, Mark Evans, Nathan Swift, and all sorts of OG Ryman players and players from that time period in general. This used to be an incredibly rare item in Chrono Stones, and thankfully it is a little bit more forgiving in this one. The Beard Rockers will also drop the Fascinating Scroll, which is used to unlock characters from Nobunaga's time period, such as Nobunaga himself, but also Katsu. So that was, that was my main interest. Finally, you get Uplifting Boots for beating the route, and for S-ranking it, you get one of the better goalkeeper moves in the game, Negative Feedback. Now we look at the right route. I think you can go in any order with this. Oh no, I do need to use Steel Tower Ticket 2, which will have been made available. Actually, yes, check my notes. So Steel Tower Ticket 2 is not unlocked by beating matches here. It's actually in a silver chest in Inazuma Town. So if you want to see where this is, I recommend check the icon in the top right or check the end slate, the link in the description, anything to see my videos on silver and gold chests. That will show you where to find not just Steel Tower Ticket 2, but all of the optional tickets. Um, this route is available in Chapter 5, but you cannot get the silver key until Chapter 6, so not that much later, but the actual silver key itself is found in one of the bedrooms at the very end of the Orion Express. So use that and then the Steel Tower Ticket 2 is around Ryman in a place you can check my other videos for. So the Evil Grins will drop the Wolf Puppet and this is the last item you need to get the FFI players before the space period. This is for getting players from Storm Wolves, the Uzbekistan team. And funnily enough they also put Legendary Wolf nearby it. That definitely feels intentional. This is a long shot now, by the way, in Chrono Sons and Galaxy. It never used to be in the original trilogy. Hat Caps drops the mysterious menu, which I think you just use to recruit players from Windsor Manor and their Golden Oldies team. Trickery is a move manual that you'll get along the way, but perhaps more of interest is the Dragon Scale, dropped by the Feudalists. That will help you get players from Dragon Link such as Quentin Cinquedea. 
thank you for the Ivy Selective kit at the very end of the route. Not often that you end a route with Ivy Selective. High Rise Hop is a pretty good defensive move that's only in the games, never seen in the anime. But you definitely see Tornado Tunnel, that's in the movie. Uh, this is still part of Arian's level up moveset in Go Galaxy, but if you want to give it to someone else, there you go. Just S rank this route, and hey, even this team down here, if you beat them enough times, you get the Penguin Plushie number three, which will let you recruit players from Royal Academy. That was a bonus note, just on me. Now this one will take a fair bit more explaining. We're here in Inazuma Park, and here we find Victoria Vanguard. This is because I'm playing on Supernova specifically, and if I were playing Big Bang, Tori's route would instead be found on the third floor of the hospital within Ryman. Still available at the same point of the game, and we will in fact be heading to that location for the other version exclusive competition route. Essentially there are two routes that swap places, but I will still say what the rewards are uh, in both Supernova and Big Bang. Just know that here in Chapter 5 you can get started on Tori Vanguard's route, but you can only go to the right. If I look at the first player on the left, they suddenly jump up to level 55. So you can only do this right hand side before beating the game, and then the other route is locked behind beating the version exclusive post game boss which also happens to be called Supernova or Big Bang but that allows you to open up the left but for now if we look at the right none of these items are going to be essential it's not like unmissable special tactics because they don't want to have anything too good behind version exclusivity but this fire drill in Supernova would be the tower in Big Bang five purple coins in Supernova would be five silver coins in Big Bang Pyroclastic in Supernova would be Zigzag Spark in Big Bang, again both dribbling moves. TP Boost Plus would be FP Boost Plus in Big Bang, so straight up Supernova gets the better end of the stick here. This is the only item of any real importance I would say out of these items. In Supernova you get the special tactic Dark Thunder, while in Big Bang you get Godspeed. So Dark Thunder slows the opponents down, and Godspeed makes you faster. They both suck. They cannot win a single duel against another tactic. You have to activate them when nothing else is activated. And at that point, just use Thunderbolt to score a goal. You've already got it. But if you want to have every special tactic in the game, then you will need to come here. And yes, the opposite one is still available in Big Bang and Supernova. The opposite of what you're playing. It will just come a lot later on. So we get the formation Albatross from Southern Claw. This is a version exclusive team from Go One that you can find just hanging around in the desert. So they're an interesting team to face off against, but not especially high level. We get the FP Boost Ultra here in Supernova. If you're playing Big Bang, you get TP Boost Ultra, which is more useful. And finally, if you S rank the route, you get Solar Nexus in Supernova to represent Sol Daystar, being exclusive to Wildfire. And if you're playing Big Bang, where Bylong once again is available, just like in Chrono Stones, he will give you White Hurricane. So that's all possible before beating the game, but once you've beaten Arculus and Circulus with their Big Bang or Supernova teams, you can do these slightly more difficult matches. And I should note that these matches are the first ones to have actual sort of challenges like Team Ignition for example allows you to play with only wood element players putting them at a disadvantage and the Block Kings is just based upon having really high block and they can just really beat you up as a result of that. Here in this chest we get Spirit Guard in Supernova or Spirit Smash in Big Bang. This one has a Supernova brand new move Zero Gravity, known in Japanese as Fatal Lift. This is one of the moves that the Supernova team actually uses to lift you into the air and drop you. It's very cool. In Big Bang, you'd have Phalanx from the Big Bang team. Apparently, I've got every single item out of Technique Kings because I really struggled to S rank that one. But then Supernova <laughs> cleared that one up much more easily. Obviously, this would be the Big Bang team if I was playing the Big Bang game. If you beat that, you get the linked ticket, 
which will be useful for another competition route down the line. That's the one that would be based in the hospital in Supernova or in Big Bang. It would be right here in Inazuma Park. And finally, if you can S rank, which is difficult because it means beating Supernova with an S rank when they've got a really good totem goalkeeper. But if you can do it, you get from Genesis a special move, Supernova. And in Big Bang, it would be Inazuma Nationals move from Season 3, Big Bang. Both Big Bang and Supernova have been the names of games before, just now they're back for those specific games. If we head to the Saints Way Stadium next, I'll first show you the actual Pal Pack Society that allows you to get players from any FFI team before actually heading into space. You can see that we've got all the required items as a result of doing those earlier competition routes. You need a coriander cologne as well, just as an extra bonus behind it. But yeah, you can get these relatively early on in the game, which is nice as long as you have all of their other requirements as well. Now available halfway through chapter 6 is a competition route run by Celia Hills. And it is available earlier in the game than a lot of other routes, but it's considerably harder than them anyway. It honestly feels like a post-game route that they just accidentally made available earlier or just randomly made the snap decision uh, to make it available early because we've got level 45, level 43 and level 50 in the first match of each, each route. But these teams also have some stats which are just escalated into the stratosphere. Maybe not so much Inazuma Kids FC and the Golden Oldies. You need to beat the Black Templars first to get the ticket that unlocks the other routes here. But some of the players in this route, before you've even beaten the game, have like beyond maxed out shot or beyond maxed out block. Zero Magnum, by the way, is a really good reward. The uh, collab shoot of Bylong and Tezcat in Go 1. These players, without a doubt, will have higher stats than you when the route is available. You can still beat them by just being skilled at the game, but it becomes a lot harder to S-rank the final matches in these routes because of how artificially inflated the stats of these players are. And on top of that, because this route is themed around, around the Saints Way tournament of Go 1, you are not allowed to use totems. You are allowed to use fighting spirits and you can armify them. And you will want to get the move manual for Great Blaster, one of the best moves in the game for stunning, or at least it was in Chrono Stones, I haven't checked it in this one. You can get the zero boots for an S rank, but... Some of the routes in this game will have both totems and fighting spirits prohibited, particularly in the FFI matches, but for the ones in space you can use whatever you like, so those are a little bit easier in that sense. Again, the recruitment items for all of these teams we got earlier in the game, so you don't need to get them here. This is just where you get their coaches when you do defeat them, and they gradually get harder and harder, like dealing with Quentin Chinquidea with his fighting spirit up and the ability to armor fly, I'm guessing. It's a lot to deal with when you haven't even necessarily beaten the game yet. But main thing is, if you beat Ancient Darkness, you may get the Light and Dark Sculpture, which is what you use to unlock players from both Ancient Darkness and Eternal Light. Those are the teams of Tezcat and Bylong. Or of Zero, if you would rather word it that way. And finally, for an S rank of it, you get their special tactics, Zero Space, which is probably a contender for the strongest defensive tactic in the game, though strength and TTP consumption isn't necessarily the most important thing with defense. I'd rather use three box locks than one Zero Space, or two offside traps than Zero Space, but it is there if you need the extra firepower. Though I should of course mention that involves S-ranking a match where the goalkeeper is going to be level 85. It's not easy and at that point you probably almost definitely don't need zero space. 
So now, after you beat the Nyadi team in Chapter 7, a midway through the story of it, and go do an extra competition route down here in this fairly hidden area, an alien looking dude is available with one of the final routes you can do before beating the game, and again, we can only do the left hand side. You'll notice that the left hand side is level 44. Sorry, the, the lower route is what I should say. Fire Dragon is available here at level 21. This upper route is only available after you've gotten the golden key. So that is in Lost Galaxy where you find the Supernova and Big Bang version exclusive post-game team. Again, see my video on silver and gold keys to know exactly where to find that key. The ticket itself is available on Nyadi. It's in the rotating bridges room, but again, just see that actual video to know exactly where. And so this is where you actually get to play against the teams that you fought during the main story, exclusive to Go Galaxy, starting with Fire Dragon. Some of these have useful rewards, others don't. Big Waves, for example, have Suction Vortex, the special tactics that they introduced, whereas Fire Dragon, all you're really going to get out of it is their boots, their gloves, and their coach. If I'm not mistaken, you get the coach guaranteed as an item drop for beating any of these matches, but it's not actually considered one of the six items slots. You basically beat the match and then it gives you a congratulations message afterwards saying, you unlocked Australia's coach, whatever he's called, but the special tactics is the most interesting random drop out of these. Like, for example, Sandstorm Skid, you can get from Moi Tigers. They're level 28, so it's not a great deal more than what they already were during the main story. But it's good being able to get their, some of their special moves in these treasure chests. Special Force A5 is the five-a-side team that, ga that Mike was t captaining in Chrono Stones. There's no way to play against them in this game because they're a five-a-side team. They don't have 11 members, so they can't be in a competition route. So they just give you their emblem here instead. Resistance National, that's one of the more desirable kits, I would say, if you want to represent Bylong and all of his mates in your post-game journey. Storm Wolves, one of the final teams, you don't actually get anything from them, <laughs> very weirdly. You'll just get Warsaw as a defensive move in the chest afterwards. But Silver Screens is an interesting one because it's actually the true identity of Stormwolves. Here, Stormwolves is aliens disguised as the Uzbekistan players, whereas this is actually the team against the aliens. They don't, they don't drop anything too important either, but you can still beat the route to get a cross pendant, or S rank the route to get a move manual, blood, sweat and tears. So again, that's all available before beating the game, but once you've got that gold chest deep into the post-game, you can go for these slightly harder matches, where you can rematch Silica 11, Nyadi 11. Again, you'll be getting their coaches as you beat them. That's a guaranteed drop. You can get some brand new moves as well, like Scorching Skydive. The Terrible Shadows are here as well. Only one of these teams, I believe, actually has an item that I would maybe consider essential. It's nice to get stuff like Holograb out of Fallow Medius and Whipper Slapper, one of the most popular new moves within Galaxy. That's Jackknife for everyone who played in Japanese. Here's another opportunity to face, to face Ixar Fleet and you'll definitely want to because they're quite hard to beat at level 74. Again, it's really hard to deal with totem goalkeepers when you're trying to S rank a match but they will eventually drop the Stinger wing model, and that is what you actually use to recruit the players from XR Fleet itself. So if you want Osrock on your team, you've got to beat him here again. And also, if you can beat the Galaxy Rivals, which is based off various players at once, you can get the Pixie Doll, which is used to recruit either Arculus in Big Bang or Circulus in Supernova, and the rest of their teams. Finally, special tactics will be available to you afterwards and Mark of the Berserker counts as one that you can use. If you want to get rid of your opponent goalkeeper's totem, this is one way to do it. You can use Mark of the Berserker 
to get rid of it. So that would have helped me if I actually opened that off screen. But the main thing of interest to me is Stargazer. It's available as a move manual to give to any player you want. And oh, I so want to give Radiation Storm to at least some player. I will have to figure out who exactly that's going to be. But this is definitely very, very useful. None of the items here are actually for recruiting from those teams other than XR Fleet. That was available earlier in the game. But definitely give this one a look. There is one more competition route that you can start before beating the game, but only barely. There is one of the terrible shadows here at the Phalum spaceport here in Phalum Orbius. But this guy is only available in Chapter 10. There are 10 chapters in this game, and you have to beat Phalum Madius first, but he's just about available before you challenge XR Fleet, the final boss of the whole game. I think the idea here is that XR Fleet are quite a bit higher in level than Phalamadius. So they want to give you some extra way of leveling up, but it kind of pace breaks to have a competition route dropped on you at this point in the game, especially when they are insultingly easy. The first route sends you to the left and the Chengdu champions in chapter 10 after you've beaten Phalamadius and just before Ixar Fleet, they hit you with teams that are level 21. And the highest leveled team in the entire competition route is only level 47. And that's at the very end. It's frankly a bit insulting. I don't know why they're throwing such easy matches at you when you've already... If you've been doing the competition routes, then you'll probably be level 99 at this point anyway, and you've kept on top of everything. They just... They truly went soft on this competition route. But you know what? As a reward, Perfect Pass is one of the best skills for competitive play. So that's definitely something that is nice to keep in the back pocket. As are any kind of pendants, they're always good for just increasing your stats without having to think about it too much. We get Plasma Cut, Soul Daystar's dribbling move, but this is not a version exclusive thing like Solar Nexus was. That's just there in both games. And finally, we have an important item drop. Dead Set drops the Nosy device, which you use to unlock characters from the future, such as Faye, Goldie, and Saw. Possibly Zanuck as well. It definitely doesn't include any of the hyper evolved children from uh, Ragnarok, but protagonist characters from the future like Faye, Goldie and Saw are locked behind this item. You can also get the Angel, Angel and Demons Romance from the True Legends, which is a team actually made up of characters like Nobunaga Oda, Joan of Arc and all the other historical figures, which is used to get players from the Dark Angels such as Destra and Sanctus. You can also get Goopy Gloopy Goo, formerly one of the best defensive moves in the game. It's still a good shot block, but they have nerfed it in this game by making it more likely to foul, and much more likely to foul at that. Great Blaster is another move that was overpowered in Chrono Stones that has been nerfed. The stun damage has been reduced from 50 to 10, but the power is still 170 at least. You can then go to the other side. What a team name that is. Well, uh, well, I've acknowledged it now. You can get Spirit Guard in this chest. Macho Muscles is available. Ganymede Ray, one of my favourite shooting moves in the whole series, is available in this treasure chest. And it's actually a really good counter shot in this game as well. Try and block a, an oncoming long shot with Ganymede Ray and then I'm a far in my laser it all the way back up the pitch. Special Tactics Track Cycling is also available here, alongside Crystal Barrier. This time it's the goalkeeping move of Alpine, not to be confused with the uh, Absolute Barrier Special Tactics. Victory Boots is your reward for beating the route, but the right route's S-rank reward is Thundertaker. Do you remember how they nerfed Great Blaster, one of the best stunning moves in the game, 
and made it do less stun damage. If I'm reading rightly from the Inazuma 11 wiki, and I'm honestly not even sure if this is correct, but if I have read my information properly, Thundertaker does more stun damage in Galaxy, and it's definitely stronger. It apparently goes from 170 to 180 in power, and 50 stun to 60? This move was already insane on Sol Day Start and Bai Long when you had their Mixy Max up. And now that we can just give Thundertaker to anyone we like, this is oppressive. It is obviously an S rank reward, but the only thing stopping you is level 47 Red Eyes 11. There's no special rules here either, you can simply just beat it. So Thundertaker is there for the taking. And although there's not much else in this route, you definitely do want to take it. So now it is time to go into the past because we're going to look at the competition routes available only in the post game. There aren't too many of these, but that's because there's so many competition routes available before beating the main game. Don't worry, it doesn't double the amount of routes that you've got to beat or anything like that. But this one is a fun one because if you go to Rhyme and Club Room in the past, you'll find Mr. Wintersea. There's a silver or gold chest right around here. But this is a series of rematches against very historic old teams. Like, for example, the first ones... Well, actually, the first ones are just like Heroes of the Sky and Heroes of the Forest. But along the way, you get OG teams like Football Frontier Ryman who drop their old football kit. And you can get items like Heaven's Time just before we face off with Zeus, for instance, or the first year legends. There is the Zeus match that gives the historical ticket one and allows you to go further into this route. You can get final death zone for S ranking the route, which was barely even attainable at all in Chrono Stones. You could play the game for nearly a hundred hours and still not even see this move. I think it used to be a long shot, however, in Chrono Stones, which it's definitely not in Galaxy, so definitely a nerf move, but at least it is available. But the main gimmick to be aware of, um, you want to go to the right first, if we're going in order. The main thing is that because this is made up of players from the past and it's putting you in the days before Fighting Spirits and Totem exists, you can't use any of them. The special rule is not just no totems or no spirits, it's no auras, which means you and the opponents can't use either of them. Genesis, though, will drop the alias Soap Crystal. I really like that joke as a item reward. That'll let you get players from not just Genesis, but any alias academy team like Janus and Dvalin. Heavenly Drive is a great long shot to have in the middle of a chest. But right here, very, very buried within a level 71 team, is where you get the miniature caravan. You need this to get any player that was on Ryman in Go 1 and Go 2, who isn't part of your team by default. So characters that you're used to just having for free, like Rusty and Gabby and Ade and Eugene Peabody, are now actually really quite hard to get in Galaxy. You definitely can't get them until strictly the post game, and you've got to get the miniature caravan off of these guys who you've got to beat without the use of fighting spirits or totems. Though if you beat Chaos, you can unlock the third route, and an S rank will get you the angelic bracelet. But S rank in Chaos is definitely tough, though not as tough as the final match in this. For now, on the left route, if you take on Team Evans, you can get the Magnificent Trophy, which is how you get the adult members of Inazuma Legend Japan, like grown-up Hurley, grown-up Axel with his proper hair, grown-up Mark Evans, all of that. It's a lot easier to get in this game than it was in previous ones. We can get Dark Matter as a move manual, which I feel like I've not even seen in Galaxy maybe more than a single time. Team Sharp is there, that's me, that's who I am. This one is Black Data number 9, so I already made a separate video on every feature of the Dark Room and how to unlock its stuff, 
but this is specifically where you get black data number nine. And this is the one that's used to essentially reset all of your stat gains. Definitely something you'd still want to pick up because it's a whole menu option that they're locking behind a competition route. The Dark Angels will drop the Crimson, Gr Crimson Gene, and this isn't useful for too many people, but you do need it to get the Miximax forms of Desmodus Dracul and Wolfram Vulpine as separate characters. You can still get them, uh, at least one of them, during the main story when you're getting the extra Earth-11 members, but if you want their Miximax forms as a separate recruit, then you've got to get the Crimson Gene out of this match. We'll get ourselves some five gold coins. I've got enough of those already from doing the Wi-Fi downloads. Uh, same would go for anyone who's playing on a cartridge. But this match is hell. They make you try to S rank a level 90 Team Ogre without spirits or totems. And the goalkeeper still has so much TP to keep doing moves forever. And the goalkeepers in this game are already incredibly powerful without totems and such. Anyway, this is the only match in the whole game where to S rank it, I actually needed to use healing player, healing items on my two absolute strongest kickstat players. I genuinely had only two players that could reliably score against Team Ogre's goalkeeper. So I used the maximum amount of three healing items in a single match to finally S rank this on like the 10th try. This is ludicrously difficult. If you just beat it, you get special tactics, Storm After the Calm, which is Dark Thunder and Godspeed combined. But if you're able to S rank Team Ogre, which is a heck of an undertaking, but your reward will be big moves. A very appropriate reward indeed and something that people will definitely be chasing after. So thank you for that one, Mint Mr. Wintersea. It's one of the more difficult competition routes, but it is genuinely pretty fun. Oh, and one more thing. This will apply to every post-game competition route. Now, I don't even have a single one unlocked on my save file to show you, unfortunately, but ultimate evolution manuals are what you use in this game to take a fully leveled up move, such as you can see here on my Soul Daystar, I've used Plasma Cut, Solar Nexus, and Solar Surprise so much that they have fully evolved to their Z or S statuses respectively, and Atomic Flare is on version 4, so that's very close to being fully evolved as well. Tezcat here with Black Ash is level 5, so when a move's evolution status has turned gold, that means it is fully evolved, with the exception of the fact you can use an ultimate evolution manual on it to bring it up even further. And this will bring the move to exactly 99 TP in cost and bring it out to a flat, huge power increase. It makes them way more expensive, but way stronger. And even some of the weakest moves like Einsatz, you can ultimate evolve it and then all of a sudden it's one of the strongest moves in the game. But you need specific move manuals, well, you need specific ultimate evolution manuals depending on the type of the move. So Team Ogre, for example, one of the two items that I haven't got is the shooting move ultimate evolution manual. I can also check Chaos. They would have the offensive ultimate evolution manual, which is for dribbling. Zeus will sometimes, again very rarely, drop an ultimate evolution manual for goalkeeping moves. And where is my last team? Somewhere in here is the Dark Angels. There we go. They give you the ultimate evolution manual for defensive moves. So there's only one team per route for each type of ultimate evolution manual, and they're really rare but I'm going to make sure to highlight as we go along which team they might drop from because they're very useful items and there's no other way to get them at all. Now this is going to have a lot of items once again. You want to go into Ryman Stadium and this lower left club room will have Dr. Cryptics in it from Chronostones. And we've already done the Go 1 themed route, this is the Chronostones themed route. 
and that means once again that totems are not available, but you can use spirits and armified fighting spirits. So that's a, a good one to, to bear in mind. You can get the emblem for Knights of the Round Table because they're not included in any competition route because it's literally just Ryman, but without Arian and Fey in it. You start off with the early teams of Chronostones like the Sherwins, Protocol Omega, which immediately is there to drop the Timecraft driving license, which you need not just for, play for players from Protocol Omega 1, but any Protocol Omega team from Alpha, Beta and Gamma's team. You'll want the Timecraft driving license to get so many cool players. The football bots, meanwhile, will occasionally drop the danger button, which is what you need to get the robots of Perfect Cascade. And maybe the football bots themselves, but uh, I think that's a lower priority. If you can beat Protocol Omega 2.0, you'll get the ticket which unlocks the other routes up above, or at least the next one. Atomic Spin is a really good long shot to have. It's actually part of Jordan Greenway's level up moveset now, so you may have seen it earlier on in this series. An S rank will just get you a Guardian Pendant. But by beating Protocol Omega 2.0, we next unlock the left route, which carries on with the White Deer, Protocol Omega 3.0, the Terracotta Army, and then Xanox Domain, which will drop the Hoverbike model. This is how you get, obviously, players from Xanox Domain, but that includes Xanox himself, and he is definitely a player that is of great interest within the competitive landscape of Go Galaxy because he still has spirit big moves in his level up moveset to basically say whichever Zack version of Zanuck I want to use, they can have spirit big moves either way. And I think there's some legitimate arguments as to why Zack Avalon might be better, but either way, you can then beat Perfect Cascade to unlock the ticket to the final route here. You can have their special tactics fiber optics for beating the route, or for S ranking it, you can get double god hand. The post-game god hand from Chrono Stones. Still really, really strong. But that means the right side route is finally available to us. And this is when it starts getting really difficult because with no totems, you're locked into whatever spirits you have currently unlocked and the teams are getting harder and harder to get past. Specifically Giel, not Zan, not Gal, but only Giel will drop the Precious Ampole, which is the item you use to get any hyper-evolved children from any Ragnarok team. So all three of these, and Ragnar as well, you will need the Precious Ampole, specifically from level 69 Giel. Maybe even pick up a No Future while you're at it, because that is one of my favourite moves in the series history. You will definitely get a decoy deploy. So Ragnar themselves don't actually have that much to offer, but upon beating them, you get the special tactics Cascading March. If you don't have March of the Penguins yet, then this would be your new best special tactic. Better than Offside Trap, although more expensive, but this is one of the absolute best for both defense and taking you up the pitch once you've used it defensively. You can take on Luna Howl in Supernova. This would be... Nos Fanatico in Big Bang, I think, maybe. Oh, they're both level 75, so no, they're both available uh, in the same order in either game. But you can get five gold coins, and then you get to Children of the Night. And if you thought Team Ogre was hard, you know, at least I had the option of using healing items to make that match a little bit easier. This one is insane, because their goalkeeper will have his spirit up for basically the whole match, like one half with regular spirit and then eventually he'll armor fight. It'll almost never run out. And the reason for that is the goalkeeper has the move Crimson Sphere on his spirit, which is so cheap, it uses up less FSP than an actual normal catch with the spirit. And the AI isn't actually broken on this match. He will go for Crimson Sphere every time. And it's got like 2,000 power. You're only beating it out if you've taken a player to the dark room and absolutely maxed out their kickstart as much as possible. And even then, he might still stop you if the elements work in his favor. I was only able to S-rank this through P 
pure luck. I can't even remember how the match went, but I tried this again and again, and it seemed honestly impossible to me. And it is indeed only possible to do with players that you've absolutely stat trained beyond belief. If you just take a player through the story, they're not good enough for this match. But if you are able to S rank them, you get Forever Armoured, which is really quite a, quite a useful one to have in the back pocket. But that's not the S rank route reward. I lied. The S that's just for beating the match. Even beating Children of the Night is honestly quite hard. But if you can S rank them, I cannot believe they did this because they must have known this match is ludicrously difficult. Yes, I did it, but only through what I would consider cheese tactics at that point. They clearly thought when developing this game it was going to be possible because you need to S rank Children of the Night to get Grand Plan! <laughs> like the special tactic for all special tactics. It's get unique gameplay wise. It's the final unlock you get in Chrono Stones during its final boss. It's the one where you pass to all 11 of your players to build up the strength of your next shot. It's fun to use. It's not too useful overall because it's very very hard to get the most out of it without getting the ball taken off you at some point but at least give us the option of unlocking this special tactic without having to s rank this if you're able to s rank this match you're able to s rank any match in go galaxy well maybe except for the level 99 routes and one other match but we will get to that if you want your ultimate evolution manuals it is Luna Howl that drops it for defensive moves, Nosfanatica that drops it for goalkeeping moves. Surprisingly, it's the Terracotta Army that drops it for dribbling moves. And, of course, because how could it be anything else, Children of the Night drops it for shooting moves. And the fact that I don't have it after doing this match again and again and again says a lot. Finally, we're going back to space for its first post-game competition route. We're going to Ancestor Village in Magmavia. If you talk to the Elder Ragang Gear, he has got another route for you. There's pretty much no restrictions. The first three matches don't let you use Fighting Spirits, but that's all. Every other match after this point will allow you to use Totems, Fighting Spirits, anything you want. So. It's, um, I don't want to give that illusion of it being hard, because this is uh, all kind of new stuff for Go Galaxy, and that means the goalkeepers are almost certainly going to have totems. We also encounter teams like the Snow Weasels, the Golden Bears, and the Aquatic Wings. All of these were level 99 teams in the Grandfather route, in Chrono Stones with one exclusive player on them which isn't found anywhere else. So it's great to see these teams back, but they're actually quite redone. They are not the same teams as before, they just still have the same captains. March of the Penguins is in this box. By far the, special t the best special tactic in the game and it's not close. It steals the ball from anywhere in the pitch and then it stuns everyone in the pitch as well. So you take the ball for free just by using one special tactic, and then you can run all the way to the goal, and the stunned players on the ground will have nothing they can do about it. The goalkeeper will be able to use his moves, but you're still getting a free shot. March of the Penguins, you can use up to twice per match, and it's pretty much a guaranteed two goals as long as you can beat the goalkeepers themselves. The Golden Bears, meanwhile, is where we actually start to get recruitment items dropped from these. And it corresponds to the teams that we fought in the second half of the main story in space. Golden Bears drops good sand, which is what you use to get players from Silica, the sand-based team. Um, I'm forgetting what their Japanese names are, but you can also take on the Aquatic Wings to get the World Azure Encyclopedia which you use not only to get the players from Nyadi themselves, like Powai Plink, but also any member of Phalamorbius who was temporarily on that team, like Hilary Flail, for instance, or Rondula, 
she will also have the World Azure Encyclopedia as a recruitment item. So definitely want to get that from the Golden Bears, the Aquatic Wings, and the Night Vipers will drop Goraga's Horn Bow to use to get the insect players from Fertilia. Black Data number 8 is randomly here quite far, quite far down the route. This is the one that lets you spend just a set amount of money to increase your player's stats without having to do mini games. It's really expensive, but it's definitely the quickest way to raise your player's stats. Finally, the Crimson Hounds is the last of the Grandfather Root teams, and they will drop the Smooth Oil, which you use to get players from Magmavia, which is where we are right now. They're kind of out of order. You get the Fertilia item here, and then the Magmavia item here. They're the other way around in the main story, but you know what? It's a, it's a very minor thing to point out. Beating the route will get you the defensive move Waterwall from Nyadi's team, and if you can S rank the route, you can get the Demonic Bracelet. But it's still tough. I believe all of these former Grandfather route teams are now using Totems rather than Fighting Spirits, but it has been a long time since I've done these matches. When you go up to the top, we've just got Alias Academy, straight up, a merger of all of their teams into one. The Star Sisters, though, will drop Rolea's Handmade Medal, which is an additional recruitment necessity for anyone in Phalamadius, such as Ogar, Rondula, again, Hillary Flail, all of the invaders who joined those extra teams in the main stories, and just anyone else on Phalamadius who was exclusively a part of that team. That's a very long way of saying it's the Phalamadius players, but it includes the, the traveling ones too. You can get Cyber Attack as well, which is one of the Phalamadius uh, special moves that you don't get to see very often. And Dark Side is an interesting team because it's actually based on anyone who's associated with Ray Dark. So the Italy team, Jude Sharp, Royal Academy, and not so much the Earth Eleven, but various kind of evilly Ray Dark teams. And although I haven't gotten any of the item drops from this, one of the things it can drop, I don't know how rarely, but probably very rarely, is actually another treasure pendant. So this is how you could get a third treasure pendant. It's kind of too late at this point, and it probably is so hard to unlock that it probably wastes more time than it might have helped you anyway, but if you can coincidentally get a treasure pendant out of this match, that's really very helpful. Just in general, it increases your stats as well as increasing item drops. You can get special tactics for Crossed Path here as well, which is one of the better offensive ones. Just not quite as good as Thunderbolt because it's more expensive for about equally or less good. Sand Blaster is a goalkeeper move that we can get in this chest for beating the route, but for S ranking the route, we get Format Disc, one of the best dribbling moves out there in the whole thing. So, if you want your Ultimate Evolution manuals, you can't get them here. They're just not a part of the Magvavia route for some reason, making them even harder to obtain. But you do get Mark Evans as a coach guaranteed when you beat Fantasy Ryman, which definitely helps. This is another complicated one because it's the Big Bang and Supernova exclusive routes part two. You can find Conrad Sheepwood, the former coach of Inazuma National, well, assistant coach, within the third floor of the hospital in Supernova. He's got Camellia Travis here with him. If you're playing Big Bang though, he will instead be in the park, which is specifically in the menu, this park. That's where we found Tori Vanguard and her competition route during the main story. Again, they swap locations in Big Bang and Supernova. Because there's version exclusivity involved, all right, Cam Cam walking right through us, uh, sure. There's no essential items, definitely nothing recruitment related, not even any special tactics this time, but I will still tell you what you can get. Again, this is calling itself the linked route BB, and that is because we 
to unlock this, linked our game with Big Bang. So yeah, that's the first thing to go over. This is post-game exclusive because you do need to have beaten the final boss. You don't need to have beaten the Big Bang or Supernova teams, but you do need to link a copy of Supernova that's been completed with a copy of Big Bang that has beaten the story. That's called Secret Link, and it would be Secret Link Level 2. Secret Link Level 3 would mean that you'd beaten the actual post-game Big Bang or Supernova team, while Secret Link Level 1 is just available all the way through the game. You can see how to do a Secret Link in my actual video against Space Rankers, the combination of Big Bang and Supernova, but here you don't technically need to have done that, but you do need both copies of the game available. So, over on the left is a level 40 team, and over on the right is a significant increase of level 60. This one on the right, you need to use the linked ticket, and that is an item found at the end of Tory Vanguard's version exclusive route, which itself is locked behind a silver or gold chest. So you do need to do that one first if you're going to 100% this. For now though, you can go to the left route as soon as it's available, FP Boost Plus in Supernova would be TP Boost Plus in Big Bang. 10 white coins would be 10 purple coins in Big Bang. If that sounds like the wrong way round, it's because it is. Supernova is the purple game, but here we are in Linked Route BB to get a, a taste of what we were missing out on before. You can get 10,000 prestige points just in either. And then after that, you get this. This is the hardest match in the game, at least to S rank. They are level 51. It is a team made up purely of goalkeepers and you cannot use shooting moves against them. You can't use a totem strike. You can't use any special move, even the weakest ones in the game. All you can do to increase your kick strength is bring out a fighting spirit and use a regular kick, which still isn't that strong. The goalkeeper, meanwhile, has special moves that cost 10 TP, so he can never run out. He will use a fighting spirit. He will armify it. And you are somehow asked to overpower a goalkeeper who's got access to everything he needs, a full match of spirits and all the moves to go along with it, without even using a shooting move? It's not like you can do the IE1 strategy of baiting the goalkeeper forwards and then just kicking it into the back of the net. This is almost impossible. You need to absolutely train the cojones off your players and you might stand a chance I have not even A-ranked this match, let alone S-rank it, and I am never going to. TP Boost Ultra in Big Bang will be FP Boost Ultra, and 5 gold coins will be still 5 gold coins in, in either one. Can you tell we're on a bit of a downer? You've got Northern Fang, which is the opposite team to Southern Claw, so again, you can get both of them within the same game, just... Northern Fang is a lot more hidden in Supernova, and vice versa. I was wrong, yeah, you can get the special tactic for Godspeed here at the very end, but this is useless, it is there just for having all special tactics at this point. And if you can somehow S-rank the hardest challenge that Inazuma has ever put forward, harder than the level 99 routes themselves, it's just the skill Demon Dribbler. So like, you're not really missing anything. The main reward is getting rid of this friggin' stop sign so I don't have to see my own failures even though I'm barely doing anything wrong. The right hand side is weirdly a lot more doable. You can get Bloodsucker Bite, which is Desmodus Dracul's shooting move in Supernova. In Big Bang you get Werewolf Howl, the move of Wolfram Vulpine. Either way, these are still some of the strongest moves in the game. Really, really good to have on your side. You can also get Spirit Smash X in Supernova or Spirit Guard X in Big Bang. 
beat a few more high level teams. These are surprisingly quite hard to S rank as well. Big Bang themselves are waiting at the end here in Supernova and vice versa in Supernova. In You get what I mean. The, the opposite in the other game. There you go, get the combat boots. This is a different pair of boots in Big Bang, but who knows which. And finally, Demon's Horn is here at the end. The merger of Northern Fang and Southern Claw is here as a level 88 team, but at least they're using spirits rather than totems on the goalkeeper, I think. You can get Psychic Arrow as a move manual for clearing it. This is, uh, again, one of the Space Rankers moves. And if you S rank that big, big challenge, uh, Sacrificial Switch is one of the funniest goalkeeping moves in the game, and it is available to you only in Supernova. You cannot get it at all in Big Bang. If you S ranked this route in Big Bang, you would instead get Port Cullis Guard from the Big Bang team's goalkeeper. Let's just say there's a reason that when they merged the two teams to become Space Rankers, they picked the Supernova player with Sacrificial Switch to go in the goal. Definitely more popular. Psychic Arrow, by the way, in Big Bang would instead be Sword of Atlas, the move of Circulus. But that is all the normal competition routes in the game. There are three more, but these are the level 99 routes. You can only unlock these if you access the Wi-Fi. So I've done this in a previous video, so I can't show it here. But again, if you want to check my video on silver and gold chests, that will have more information there. Essentially, as long as you're playing on a cartridge, you can connect the game to the Wi-Fi, and then you download three keys to unlock different rooms. You actually need to buy the keys first from the shop in Ryman School. But once you've bought the keys from there, you can head into the storage room where you'll find Nelly Ryman with some items sitting around. First of all, I apparently haven't even opened these in this save file, so that's a nice little bonus. We've got Rhino. We get the totem for Black Bear. That's helpful. So only available behind Wi-Fi. And then these level 99 routes themselves, I have not actually played yet because that will be its own content on this channel but to give you the items in order out of these regular chests, if you can beat these very challenging level 99 teams, you'll get in order seven gold coins, dribbling move Eye of the Storm, 1300 prestige points, the dribbling move Deceitful Wings from XR Fleet, also known as Shiny Feather, the skill Rhino again, and then at the end of it, a really strong pendant, and if you could somehow S rank this level 99 route, you get the shooting move of Space Rankers, Galactica Fall, the strongest move in the game. So, definitely some good stuff, and we've got more of them as well. Make sure to also buy the key for Ryman's old club room here in the main map. You can walk through the front door and then this is the locked room, but within it we get more good, good items, like the Wish Bracelet, the Gold Chest's Horse, Arian's former totem, and the Earth Infinity in a move manual. That's comparable to whatever the rewards of this actual route are going to be, but it is Gus Martin himself, the fan favourite. I again have not done any of these matches yet, but it starts with Football Frontier Ryman, and these chests in order will give you the shooting move Black Dawn, 1700 prestige points, Natural Love, the dribbling move of uh, Trina, Konoha Rendezvous. You then get eight gold coins. And then you get Spirit Big Moves! So this is the most important of the three level 99 routes, and thank god it's not locked behind an S rank. If you want to beat any level 99 routes, you want to do this one first so that you can get an extra spirit big moves. And then you get the defensive move, Obliteration. You get some shoes. And finally, if you're able to S rank it, you get Ultimate 11 Assault, the big grand finale move from Chrono Stones. So Gus Martin, he is packing some big treasures. 
Finally, we have to go to the Inazuma TM bus once again to head into the past. And from there, you can head to Inazuma Tower. If you go there in the present day, it just won't work because we're interested in this cabin hut where the door's all rusted over in the present day. But in the past, you can let yourself in and get some regular items like the Guardian Pendant. Omega Assault, another one of my favourite moves and very, very strong. You can get Blood, Sweat and Tears again. And within the gold chest is the Horned Owl, a reskin of Keenan's Totem. So Sylvia is the only level 99 route to actually have two different directions you can go. So first, if you're heading left, starting with the Children 11, you will get in order Diffuse Cord, the dribbling move of Ricardo, the skill critical, and then at the end of it, you get Majestic Radiance, known in Japanese as Glorious Ray. This is one of the LBX themed shooting moves that Van Yamano would be using. If you S rank it, you get the Earth Infinity, but we just got the Earth Infinity a few minutes ago in this recording. If you go to the right hand side, the first item that you get after beating Protocol Omega 3.0 is a really little known defensive move called Master Stroke. Definitely look that one up if you've never seen it before because i have honestly forgotten it ever existed. But it's a Void type block that used to be exclusive only to Grandpa Danger, the Koro Koro Comics character who's always been either a password exclusive or just within a secret kind of character recruitment thing. It's 140 power and void type though, so it's genuinely good. After that though, you get Easy Breezy Kid, the Easy Breezy with a goat involved, nine gold coins, Penguin the Hand for your goalkeepers, and the other Little Battlers experience move, Big Bang Slash, same name in both regions. So one of them is Van Yamano's move, the other belongs to Hero, and they are only available in these level 99 competition routes, which is kind of insane, then the S rank route is uh, the S rank reward is just a really good pair of shoes. So that will do it. There are a lot of competition routes in this game. The level 99 routes are really, really tough. Children of the Night is really, really tough. And solely goalies might be the hardest match in Inazuma 11 history. But if you want to get all of your character recruitments, all of your good items, your spirit big moves, anything that you need for a playthrough of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy before and after beating the game, that should be everything. If you've got any other questions after that, leave a comment and I will see if I can help. But this has probably been enough detail, so this has been Tale of the Toaster and good luck with your competition route journey.